Hello, welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion on the unbanked and underbanked household and their impact on individuals' lives. So, what is unbanked and underbanked? Unbanked is defined as a household where no one in the household has a checking or savings account at any bank or credit unions. According to a survey by the FDC, FDIC, this is the Federal Deposit Insurance Agency uh, company, about 5.9 million households, meaning 4.5% 4, 4 of the population, were unbanked in 2021. An underbanked household is a household that has a banking account, but they don't have access to a a lot of other typical financial services, such as credit cards or loans. So they have very limited uh, banking services. And about 14% of the household in the U.S. was underbanked in 2021. So that's a very high percentage. What that means is almost one in five households is either unbanked or underbanked. And here are the reasons that uh, the households give for either unbanked or, under, or underbank. Most of them said that they don't have enough money to meet the minimum balance requirement. So if you don't meet the minimum balance requirement, that oftentimes means very high fee, or you may not even qualify to open, open, uh, open a bank account. Uh, another reason was that uh, these individuals don't trust banks. And um, so the first is a financial reason and also an institutional reason, right? Banks requiring minimum balances. Uh, there may be a reason for banks to do that because they, uh, the low balance may not be worth their while to service these customers. Uh, and the don't trust bank has to do with an education about what the banks actually do, how are they regulated, and uh, what safeguards are there to protect consumers? So who are these unbanked or underbanked households? As you can see, not surprisingly, finance is the number, number one reason. So households that make less than $15,000 uh, were much more likely to be unbanked compared to households that make at least $75,000 per year. However, you can see there's also a huge racial disparity. Uh, for white households, even th when they make less than $15,000, only 13.6% were unbanked or underbanked. Uh, but for black and Hispanic households, for those making less than $15,000 or less than $30,000, uh, a much, much higher percentage uh, experience unbanked or underbanked. So the, uh, the gap between unbanked household uh, in, the, in different racial groups are significant. Why do we care about households that are unbanked or underbanked? The reason for that is because being unbanked or underbanked can be very costly. Uh, it, not to mention inconvenient. Let's look at look at an example. Uh, if you don't have a uh, a bank che a checking account with a bank, it can cost you ten ten dollars to cash a check. So every time you cash a check, it costs you ten dollars. Whereas you if you have a checking account, oftentimes that is free, and the checking account itself may very well be free as well, provided that you maintain sufficient minimum balance. Uh, another example is a payday loan. If you cannot get access to a credit card or a personal loan, then a payday loan can charge as high as 400%. In, they call it fees. They don't call it interest because that is too high an interest rate to charge, but they're not giving you a loan. They are providing a check cashing or a payday, advance, uh, payday check advance service. So those are the fees that they charge, but is just interest by another name. A 2019 study by the Financial Health Network find that uh, these type of services cost Americans $189 billion in fees and interest back in 19, uh, 2018. So, uh, the type of services that unbanked and underbanked households use most often are payday loans, we already mentioned that, uh, check cashing services, 
and buy here, pay here, car finance. This is a huge industry. This has $189 billion. Uh, that is a lot. So that's the reason why those services exist. And that's also why we are uh, concerned about the cost of underbank and unbanked households. Let's take a look at an example on what, how, how, uh, how high are the cost of uh, one of these unregulated services, uh, the payday loan. Uh, in the past, there's no regulation at all for payday loan, but nowadays many states has laws that set a maximum amount that payday loan fees can charge. Remember, they do not call this interest, they call it a fee. And uh, this is regulated by state by state. So some states has this law and some states don't have a law set on the maximum. So the maximum ranges anything from uh, $10 to $30 for every $100 borrowed. So let's look at a specific example. Let's say you get paid every two weeks and you need $400 to fix your car. So the payday loan lender charges $20, which is the middle per $100. So 20, you borrow $400. So is $20 per $100. So 20 times four is 80. So it costs you $80 to borrow $400. Now at first glance, it may not seem too bad. You're only paying $80. But let's take a look at how when we compute it, what does it really translate into? So if you think of the $80 instead of a fee, that's what they call, uh, instead of a fee, if you think of an interest, what kind of interest rate are they charging you? So uh, remember this is, you get paid every two weeks. So that means you have to pay back the 400 plus $80. You have to pay back $480 in two weeks. So the interest rate or the implied interest rate is $80 over $400, because that's how much you pay in interest for the $400 that you charge. So that's 0.2 or 20% for two weeks. Now, most bank interest rate are quoted as APR or annual percentage rate, which means per year. So if it's every two weeks, uh, that means you get this, you can actually renew this for 26 times because there's 26 times per year because there are 52 weeks per year. So every two weeks means 26 times. So you, you multiply 20% by, tw by 26. That translates into 520% per year. And that's not even taking into account compounding. And that is one of the dangers of uh, payday loan. So first of all, this is very high interest rate, 520% per year. Uh, further, uh, oftentimes consumers that use payday loan get trapped. So the reason that they get trapped is because some states allow the lenders to automatically roll over loan when it becomes due. So that, and so if you miss the payment, then your loan will automatically be renewed and you'll, you'll be charged the $80. You have to pay the fee and then they will extend the due date of the loan. So the next, in the next two weeks, you pay $80 again, but you never pay off the loan. So you can pay $80 over and over again, and you still owe them $400. And for someone who is living paycheck to paycheck, to find that extra $400 can be difficult. And what they end up doing is then they'll end up paying the $80 over and over again, paying a loan that is really having an interest rate of 520% per year. So to get out of this trap, the first thing is they will need to become a bank household. And all of you who are taking this class or watching this video are already uh, one step ahead. So the first important thing is to understand that banking is not that complex. So once you have the knowledge, then you can find the necessary resources to help you. Um, 
we'll go over some of those in this class. So you'll, you'll learn all the resources that you need. They can get help with credit counseling. There are banks with programs specifically designed to help unbanked household, and they don't require minimum balance. And those of you who are college student, this is, if you don't already have a checking account, this is an excellent time to do that because a lot of banks have special checking accounts for students that don't require minimum balances and also don't charge a fee. So once you establish a, a banking account, then you become much easier to maintain it. Uh, some, a lot of banks, if you have a regular job, uh, they will also waive the fee if you take direct deposits from your employer. And in fact, that is very common. Very few people get paper checks nowadays. Um, as I mentioned, there are special programs. Uh, you can find those programs that are designed to help unbanked households to get started. We'll pause the video here. Uh, we'll continue to, when we come back uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about different services in more details and the institutions that provide them. See you soon.